In this tutorial on The Russell Brown Show, I'm going to be talking about color correcting video here inside of Adobe Photoshop CC. That's right, you can correct video using the same controls that you're familiar with for correcting still images, and that's why it's so great. So let's get started with this project. I have some video here that I've photographed in Bodie, California with a GoPro Hero 3 that I'm flying over the area using a DJI Phantom quadcopter. Now many times when you're working with a GoPro image, you need to color correct and balance the colors for the surrounding light. That's what we're going to do in this project. As you can see here, I have a single video clip here inside of Adobe Photoshop CC. I'm targeting that clip as you see here. Then I'm going to right click right over here on that video clip and first convert it to a smart object. That's my first step in this process. In order to correct all of the frames in the video, you must first convert it to a smart object as you see here. Just like that. The icon changes right there. Now, let's go ahead and apply a special filter to this. Under the filter menu, I'm going right down here to camera raw filter. This new feature can be applied to still images as well as video images. I'm going to select it right now. Now it's going to reveal my camera raw dialog. The one thing I want to focus right in on is the easy and quick way to do a color correction to all of the frames in this video. It's very similar to the way I would work with still images from the GoPro Hero 3. Right over here under this tabbed menu, Tone Curve. Right there, I'm going to select it. And right down here under Channel, I'm going to select each individual channel one by one and make my corrections. I'm going to select the red channel just like this. Then right down here, you can see this diagram indicating the number of tones within my image and how they're balanced across the image. In many cases, if there's a gap at the beginning or the end of this chart of data, you can then clip off that area, extending your range of tones throughout the entire image, and you can simply color correct both stills and video images. The trick is you simply slide the end point over to the edge of the mountain range. Sometimes I go a little bit farther than the first little peak and push it in getting as close as I can to the bulk of the mountain range, the bulk of the data within the image. And I move this endpoint over here for the dark values of the image as well as the light values indicated by this second controlling point here at the top. However, notice there is no plateau here on the right. The tones come right into the edge, so I don't need to extend them. I don't need to make any adjustment to the right hand side, I'm only making an adjustment to the left hand side. I'll go through each individual channel and I'll make a similar adjustment. You'll notice some changes happening to the image and what you should see is that it should be neutralizing your grays and getting rid of any color cast within your image. And a color cast will look like a fog or as if somebody put a piece of fogged tracing paper over your image. It reveals the true image through all of that haze and fog which is caused by the out of balance colors within your image. If you watch the image as you're adjusting it in this case, you can balance it to become warmer or cooler as you move these sliders. I'm going to make an adjustment here on the right hand side of the blue channel as well as the left hand side. I just want to see what's going to happen. It moves it into a little bit more of a cooler range, but I just want to make a little bit of an adjustment. So not only do I move it to the edge of the mountain range, but I also finesse it by watching the screen and getting just the tones I'm looking for. This looks pretty good. I can now go into my other controls, for example my basic controls, and maybe adjust the clarity a bit to sharpen it up. I might also add a little bit of vibrance because I find that GoPro images are not quite vibrant enough for me. So I'm bringing that up a little. And here's another great tip and technique. 
if you go into this tabbed item, the HSL grayscale, you can target specific colors within your image and enhance their saturation or luminance or even hue. In this case, I want to saturate the blue sky just a little bit more. So I select the saturation tabbed item here, go down to my blues and move it over to the right. And watch how I can really oversaturate the sky. I just want to give it a little bit of a boost. I could also punch up the greens in the grass in the foreground with the green slider or even the yellow slider to enhance targeted colors within my image. Let's go back over to my basic setting one more time because there's one more item I'd like to adjust and that's my shadow slider. I find when you use the curves adjustments to neutralize your grays within your image that sometimes the image gets a little bit dark. So I'm going to adjust the shadows here to the right to open up the values in the shadows. You can see if I move all the way to the left, it's dropping down the detail in the shadows and to the right, I'm opening up those areas and revealing the detail in the shadows. It's a really nice technique. It's looking so much better. Let's now click OK and it applies those settings to my image. So now I want to see what this looks like before and after these adjustments. If I move my cursor right over the toggle individual smart filter visibility icon right here, the eyeball, and click on it, I can turn it off and then on again. You can see the nice vibrance and clarity that these adjustments give this image. Finally, now that you've made all of these color adjustments, you need to save your document, of course, as an Adobe Photoshop file, which contains all of these adjustments. And you must also export this as a video so that you can use it on the web or in other projects. Let's go through this. I'm going to go up to the File menu and down here to Export and over to Render Video. Now there are two techniques I want to show you. The first technique and the way I'm going to set this up is designed for people who are using this resulting corrected video in projects with Adobe Premiere or Adobe After Effects. In that case, I'm going to select the format QuickTime and I'm also going to select Animation High Quality right here. It will result in a very large document, so be prepared for that but it will also give you the highest quality document that you can export here from Photoshop. There will be no video or audio compression applied to this document and you'll get really, really great results when you pass this on to Adobe Premiere where you do your final editing and your final compression. Okay, now you know about exporting to Adobe Premiere. However, if you want to export this to the web, or make a smaller version to display or show, then you'd select the H.264 format here. And in most cases, you're going to select your targeted device. For example, it might be the Apple TV and iPad, as you can see here, and you'd select this right here. So those are targeted presets that you can select directly from this menu you should select the preset that best suits your final results, select that, and then export the document by selecting Render here at the top. And you'll now have the color corrected version ready to be shown on the web or to be used in Adobe Premiere or After Effects. So now you know how to make some really great color corrections to video here inside of Adobe Photoshop CC. Give it a try.